Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? NASA stands at the forefront of perpetuating the most diabolical. Guys, guys, guys! You're the ones that say his voice is annoying, not me. Please subscribe. Letting go of long-held beliefs is a significant challenge for fans of space exploration and beloved movie franchises like Star Wars and Star Trek, especially upon discovering that the entire concept of outer space is an elaborate, modern-day facade. I anticipate that the seemingly impossible assertions soon to be presented will be a bridge too far for most to venture. Ah, so that's why you turned down a free trip to Antarctica then, it was too far for you to venture. Although we will decisively expose and document the extent of deceit, fraud, manipulation, and duplicity orchestrated by this organization and its collaborating space agencies, many may still find it too challenging to even consider. <laughs> yeah, right, you couldn't expose yourself if you wore a see-through raincoat into a car wash. Just because you sound articulate and use lots of big words, that doesn't mean you're right about anything you discuss. We will evidence that NASA stands at the forefront of perpetuating the most diabolical deception in history. And how exactly are you gonna do that, Mr. Dubé? Because saying it doesn't make it so. You think you'd understand that after years of saying the Earth is flat? Because it still isn't. This elaborate deception has far-reaching consequences and implications, entangling us in false cosmologies promises of future technologies, erroneous models of our Earth's true structure, and the alluring prospect of further space exploration that continues to captivate many today. And yet nobody's noticed any of that apart from flat earthers. I wonder why that is. Given that taxpayers provide $72 million each day to this enigmatic federal agency, we might naturally begin to wonder what has NASA really brought us? Well, not that much, really, apart from scratch-resistant lenses, wireless headsets, memory foam, infrared thermometers, water filters, digital image sensors, which is my personal favourite. You know the camera on your smartphone? That's all thanks to NASA as well. But apart from all those things, I would agree with you, Eric. NASA has done almost nothing to contribute to mankind. Have you ever stopped to think about that? The gravity of the situation will deepen further when we realize we are channeling our taxpayer resources into an organization perpetrating a deception of staggering proportions. Since its inception, NASA has effectively dominated the entire narrative surrounding cosmology and our understanding of Earth and its structure. So you're shocked that arguably the biggest space agency on the planet is at the forefront of space exploration and technological development. With ever advancing technology, the agency has continued to further refine its methods to deceptively seduce the world at large. Or they've used the technology that they have at their disposal to go up into space, for example the ISS, and show people that the Earth is a globe. So we don't have to just accept evidence anymore, it can be seen. If there are any governmental bodies today that should be thoroughly investigated, audited, and held accountable for crimes against humanity, it must certainly be NASA. Okay, and dare I ask who you think should audit them? I bet it's Flat Earthers, isn't it? You probably should have checked this fact before you made your video, Eric, because NASA undergoes regular audits. In fact, it's a key part of maintaining transparency and accountability for the use of public funds. The upcoming revelations of fraud and deception will be difficult for most to acknowledge and come to terms with. <sighs> Upcoming revelations. <laughs> what a twat. Now, I know this probably goes without saying, but NASA literally could not care less about flat earthers. What makes you think that a small group of people saying that the Earth isn't a globe has any impact on anything NASA chooses to do or not to do? That is the question. Yet overcoming these obstacles is essential to navigating further through this deceitful maze to reach new levels of truth and enlightenment. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the only maze that you need to worry about navigating your way through is the maze that your lies create while you're trying to convince people that the Earth is flat. This self-protecting conspiracy has captivated the worldwide population from inception up to present day. 
on a second. So you actually think that people believe in that we live on a... Go well, no, people don't have to believe it. They just have to look at the evidence. But you think that the globe is the conspiracy. My, my, the plot like my gravy thicken. I offer my deepest apologies to those who staunchly support NASA and believe in its declared mission of advancing space exploration. Yeah, well, you're apologizing to the wrong people then. The people you should be apologizing to are the unfortunate souls who are stupid enough to buy your box and believe everything you say. No, they really deserve an apology from you. This extends to the established modern day narratives of cosmology and a completely false structure of our Earth. Prove it then! No flat earther has ever been able to prove anything they claim to believe. And I know that we all understand that that's because it's impossible to prove something that's just 100% fantasy. But Eric, you were so confident in your position, try and do something to prove your position. Which we have come to accept through NASA and collaborating space agencies worldwide. Wait, are you expecting us to believe that people learn about space? From space agencies? I mean, why listen to the people over at NASA when you can just as easily watch an Eric Dubay video? The information that follows will sharply challenge the core beliefs you have long held since childhood. Yeah, well, when I was a child, I believed that Flat Earth was an idiot, and now that I'm a fully grown adult man, I still believe that. It was only in the modern era, following the advent of NASA and the commencement of space exploration through rocketry, that the heliocentric model of our solar system was universally acknowledged as a scientific truth. Well, no, we knew the Earth was a globe thousands of years before NASA was even thought up. This acceptance effectively dominated the timeless contention of the geocentric model, which had been the prevailing view across a diverse range of ancient societies, including the Sumerians, Egyptians, Babylonians, Hebrews, Greeks, Indians, Chinese, Mayans, Celts, Polynesians, Aztecs, Inca, scholars of the Islamic Golden Age, and medieval European. Yeah, but that's not exactly the most up-to-date information, Eric, is it? We've come a long way since then. The geocentric model is an astronomical concept that positions the Earth at the center of the universe. When did you do your research for this video, Eric? 1609. Evidence, Eric. It's what real adults use to decide if something is a fact or just fantasy. Overwhelming scientific evidence supports the heliocentric model, where the Earth and other planets revolve around the Sun. According to this model, all celestial bodies, including the Sun, Moon, planets and stars revolve around and over the Earth. And actually, me asking if you did your research in 1609 is being generous. Because in 1543, Nicholas Copernicus proposed the heliocentric model of the universe. And would you believe it? He was right! in 1543 and in 2024 we've still got morons like this douche nozzle saying that the earth is flat well ha 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 the geocentric view asserts that the earth is a fixed immobile point in the universe why are you even talking about this it is hundreds of years out of date and that the apparent daily movements of the sky and celestial bodies is due to the rotation of the heavens around the Earth. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And the reason it is posited in the heliocentric model of today is because scientific research and space exploration has shown us that we got it wrong hundreds of years ago. Well, more than hundreds of years ago. But now we know it's right because we've seen it. The heliocentric model an astronomical theory developed in the 16th century by Nicholas Copernicus positions the Sun as the center of the solar system with Earth orbiting around it. See, and it's comments like that that make Flat Earth so infuriating. Eric obviously knows what the truth is, but he likes to twist and manipulate it so that he can make it seem as if it supports a Flat Earth, which it doesn't. This theory was further popularized by astronomers like Johannes Kepler and Galileo Galilei. And then it became even more popular when we first flew out into space and saw that the Earth was a globe. Leaving that part out though, are you? This shift to a sun-centered model marked a significant transformation in scientific thought and laid the groundwork 
for modern astronomy as it is taught today. Abandoning the heliocentric model is essential to escaping the maze of misconceptions that have been deeply ingrained into our core educational framework from the beginning, aimed at overshadowing any revelations that might leak over time from the discoveries in Antarctica. Ah, naughty, 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 Eric, you lost the right to make any mention of Antarctica the second you declined a free trip down there to see if the sun stays in the sky for 24 hours. We all know why you won't go, because you're terrified that if you did go, you wouldn't be able to carry on with your grift. The motive to obscure discoveries in Antarctica contributed to the creation of NASA and the subsequent emphasis on space exploration, thereby supporting the Big Bang Theory and the idea of an ever-expanding universe. You do realize that the things we know about the universe and about the shape of the Earth and other planets wasn't just guessed. We didn't just hypothesize. We actually went out and did actual scientific research and made actual observations from space which confirmed what we've known for thousands of years. This initiative has significantly diminished the geocentric view of our universe, which is regarded as outdated and archaic by most today. That information is very, very outdated and should no longer be used by anyone to prove anything, apart from the fact that hundreds and hundreds of years ago, mankind just didn't know any better. What excuse a flat earth is using? The greatest deception of our time has been the conjuring of infinite space, said to extend indefinitely all around us, and a model of cosmology that starkly differs from our true reality. Let me just correct you again, Eric. It's not that we know for a fact, it's just that's what the evidence seems to show us. But the honest answer to the question of whether or not the universe is infinite is that we just don't know, which is perfectly fine. It's okay not to know something. This false depiction serves to obscure the evidence of an originating event central to our existence and fundamental in shaping an accurate understanding of our true world. But NASA isn't a word, is it, you clown? It's an acronym. Now, looking at those letters individually, they do have meanings in Hebrew. So N often symbolizes fish, representing fertility and abundance. And A, the first letter of the alphabet, symbolizes beginning, unity and God. Samek can represent support or reliance. And again, a symbolizing beginnings and unity. So if we were to playfully interpret the literal transition, we might say NASA is Hebrew or could evoke a sense of a new beginning, supported by a higher power leading to abundance. But of course, this is a very loose and imaginative interpretation. The establishment of NASA could be seen as the cornerstone of a false narrative, a saga in which rockets serve as mere props on a stage appearing to explore an infinite expanse that, upon closer look, reveals itself to be an expertly designed backdrop. Oh yeah, I always forget that moon landing denial and flat earthing goes hand in hand, but we're not talking about moon landing denial today, Eric. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you're new. We're on a mission to get to 100,000 subscribers before the end of 2024. And I can't believe I've actually made it to the end of the first week of daily uploads, well, without dying. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again on Monday. I'm going to take Saturday and Sunday to, uh, well, to probably just sleep and do not much else. See you in the next one. Love you, bye. I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever gonna happen. Mock, yeah, ing, yeah, bird, yeah.